Good morning, Bethel Community Church. Uh, this is the sermon for Sunday, June 21st for Father's Day. And if you'd join with me, let's pray before we get into looking at our passages. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for a day when we can take a pause and honor our fathers, uh, honor our parents. And we do that ultimately looking towards you and honoring you. And so we thank you for those who've uh, had a spiritual impact in our lives. So we praise you, Lord. Help us to understand your word rightly and live it out in our own lives. All to your glory. Amen. So, happy Father's Day. And for, for this Father's Day message, I kind of want to look at uh, both honoring our fathers, but also what, is, what are some of the implications for us as a church as a whole. So that's where we're going to go with it. And just to start off with honoring, honoring our fathers, I have uh, a photo here of my dad, and I, I looked at a bunch of them, and this one I particularly liked just because it made me smile. Uh, it's myself and my two brothers and my dad, and we're all decked out in matching pajamas with the Batman stuff. And it was fun. He's, he's a great dad, and... One, one memory I have of him that I particularly just appreciated of him teaching me about hard work and diligence and just the living life with him and learning from him as a whole was we were canoeing with Boy Scouts up the Columbia River and it was really, really windy, a really strong headwind where if, if one of us stopped paddling, the canoe would drift backwards because the wind was so strong, even though the other person was paddling. So we... Uh, just a fun adventure that we had, but he had a, a strong, powerful spiritual impact in my own life. Uh, he was a strong man of faith, believed and taught me. And so the next picture here, uh, this is Arthur and I. Uh, if you've been in on Zoom meetings with me or uh, prayer meetings, this is my picture that I use for the Zoom meetings. I love the picture. Uh, and Arthur and I are at Cottonwood Beach and looking out at the waves, wearing matching sunglasses. And it's just fun. And when I think of my dad and what he did for me and my life and, and what I want to be for Arthur, my most consistent prayer is that he would come to know Jesus as his Savior. And my second most consistent prayer is that I would be a godly example and role model to him, both in what I say and also what I do. And so, some fun pictures. And one last one here. Uh, God the Father. When I was thinking about Father's Day and where to go with a topical sermon here, I, I thought about, hey, Jesus had this really cool moment where his, his Father, God the Father, says, uh, this is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased had to be a very special moment for Jesus. So in celebrating Father's Day, I encourage you, honor your fathers. Uh, show, some, show some love to them. Uh, show some respect to them. Acknowledge them. Encourage them. Uh, and then <clears throat> think about our relationship to God. God, we are, we are adopted children of God. We can call him Father. And so many people... Father's Day and Mother's Day are difficult days. There's some pain there. Some people have lost fathers. They've passed away recently. Some people desire greatly to be a father and aren't. Uh, and some people have had fathers who were not good men, fathers who, who hurt them. And, and there's pain there. And I just want to acknowledge that. And I just want to say, uh, in all that pain, in all that difficulty, remember that God is your Father, and He loves you, and He cares for you, and He's, he's the ultimate example of what a good Father is. And so I just want to encourage you with that, uh, as I know for many, it can be a difficult and painful day. And so I just want to encourage you that. Kind of three places we're going to go in looking at Scripture and honoring our dads and and also looking at spiritual mentorship as a whole. Here's the three things. The first one, uh, showing honor to our fathers, why we do it, what scripture says about that. Uh, the second, just the power of mentoring, the power of 
a, a person who is with you, encouraging you, exhorting you, uh, showing you what it means to live the Christian faith and just the incredible power of mentoring and how that's something that's needed for the church as a whole. <clears throat> and then lastly, um, that we can all be spiritual parents. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of people beyond my mom and my dad who have invested heavily in my life, who have been spiritual mothers and fathers to me, who I, I look up to and I've, I've been around and I've seen their faith lived out and they've taught me scripture and, and prayed with for me and with me. And I want to encourage all of us, we can be that to one another. And that's something that's crucial for a healthy church. So that's where we're going today, looking at those three things, honoring our fathers, the power of mentoring, the importance of it, and, and being spiritual parents, uh, and the, those who are spiritually mature, teaching and leading others. So that's where we're going. So first one, honor your father and mother, showing respect to parents. We're going to look at the original command in the Old Testament. So let's go back to Exodus 20, starting in verse 12. And this is part of the Ten Commandments, and it's repeated in other places as well, but Exodus 20, 12. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. The original command here, it comes with a promise, which is really cool. It's the only of the Ten Commandments that comes with a promise. Uh, if, you, if you honor your father and mother... Things are going to go well with you. If you listen to their wisdom, if you show them respect, if you respect the authority that God has put over you, uh, things are going to go well. Things are not necessarily perfect, but it's going to go well. It's a, it's a command that comes with a promise. And this was specifically given for Israel, looking in the land in the Old Testament. But I think the principle of honoring our parents uh, continues on. And the, the value of doing that, the inherent value of when we, when we honor and show respect to our parents, uh, and when we, we listen to their wisdom, that it, it, it comes with a benefit. Um, and, and we see this command repeated in the New Testament, we see this principle in the New Testament, and that respecting authority and uh, learning from the wisdom of those who are over us and are more spiritually mature uh, is super important and, and re repeated throughout Scripture. So that, that goes to our next one. Let's jump into Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, 1 through 11, Jesus is talking with the Pharisees, and they're challenging him on things, kind of, uh, he's done some things that make them very uncomfortable, and he he's responding to that, and and addressing an area of sin in Israel at that time, relating to this command of the Ten Commandments. So Matthew 15, verses 1 through 11. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. And that's the crux of the issue right there. They, they, they're not following the traditions of the elders of the, the religious leadership in Israel. Uh, things that were kind of added of, hey, here are the commands of the law. If you do this, uh, it will help you follow the law. Um, it's a, a good thing. Washing your hands before you eat is not a bad thing, uh, especially during COVID. That's, it's not a bad time, thing to do generally, wash your hands before, you're eat, before you eat. But they're, they're making it a point of contention. And their focus is on ritual cleanliness, not so much on germs. Let's continue on. Jesus replied, Why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? He flips it on them. He says, For God said, Honor your father and mother. Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father and mother or mother with it. Thus, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, 
their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. So Jesus cuts to the quick and says, hey, you're bringing up human rules that ultimately don't really matter. Those didn't come from God. They're not a bad thing, but they ultimately aren't what it's about. And instead, you're breaking the more important command. And and it shows a heart that doesn't honor God um, more than just a superficial honoring. It doesn't honor God in the heart. And so Jesus cuts quick. That's that's the context of this. But we see the same command given in the Old Testament is now repeated in the New Testament. Um, commands them to honor their parents. Now, uh, elsewhere in Scripture, it talks about obeying our parents. And uh, it's important to understand the household uh, mindset then. So if you were in a household, uh, you'd have the, the head the head male, usually a grandpa or someone, and it would be often a generational household. He was the leader of the whole household, and you'd obey and honor and respect him. And so I think that for you who are kids and for you who are uh, living under the, the house and authority of your parents, I think that a command to obey is, is very much applicable. But I don't think the command to honor and respect our parents ends when we move out. It doesn't end. In fact, in some ways, it, it grows and changes. In some ways, it can be very, very much more difficult as you get out of the house and you're no longer um, under your parents' authority in that same way. Uh, like, I don't live with my parents, but I'm still to honor and love them and show them respect. Uh, <clears throat> beyond living in the household. And just as Jesus Uh, showed the Pharisees' lack of honor because their heart attitude was wrong, and it was just with their lips. We need to honor our parents, we need to honor our fathers with both our actions and our attitude. And we all know this. We all know how it goes when you give mom lip um, when she asks you to do your chores, uh, and you go do it, and you're grumbling about doing your chores. That's That's not honoring your mom. You're obeying, but you're not honoring um, one example that I, I think to when I think of honoring my parents, I try and call them regularly. And during, during seminary, I called my mom, and I'd be doing chores and doing stuff. And my mom, I'm like my mom. I'm kind of long-winded. I talk a lot. Uh, those of you who know me uh, know that. It's kind of a, a thing in, in that side of the family where everyone's so talkative that it's kind of like Portland traffic when you have a conversation going and uh, you need to say something or you have something to say, you just kind of merge. You just just go for it. You kind of just send right into the conversation and uh, you might turn on your blinker, but uh, you just kind of jump in there. And I have to watch that with others uh, because I can end up interrupting people. But All that to say, my mom and I are both long-winded, and so I was on the phone with her, and uh, I realized, you know, I'm not, I'm not being attentive to what she's saying. I'm doing the action to try and honor her, but I'm not really, my heart really isn't in it. So since then, I've tried to deliberately, when I call her, uh, let her talk a lot, because I want to hear from her but also be attentive actively as a listener. Be present there. Uh, even if I've got other stuff going on, but to, to be actively listening. And that's just a, a heart attitude thing. And I think that's important when we show respect, when we honor um, authority over us, when we honor our parents, that uh, the attitude is important. And this gets into how do, we, how do we honor imperfect humans? Our parents are not perfect. My parents are not perfect. They sin. I sin. Um, Arthur's going to have to honor an imperfect father. Um, and then there is also, there are some parents who do evil and are horrible parents and bad to their children. And 
how do we how do we put the frame of honoring our parents in that context? And I think there's there's two things. Uh, one, <clears throat> for people who are in that situation, particularly parents who've been uh, abusive or uh, there's just a horrible relationship there, I think focusing on honoring your heavenly Father in the context of that is is very important. He's going to be the faithful father that none of us human fathers can ever be. Um, And putting focus there. And then also working on showing honor, respect, while having boundaries, while having uh, a a strong view of right and wrong, and all those things, uh, but showing honor and respect uh, because we respect and honor God and he has commanded us, he has taught us, to honor those who are in authority over us, and specifically our parents. And I know that's hard. That's not easy to live out. One of my uh, spiritual uh, moms in the faith, uh, she, she lived this out amazingly. Um, she had been abused by her father, and then when he was old, she was caring for him. Um, he was a, a with them in, in the same household, and she was, she was caring for him, And when I heard the story of, and when she shared about what had happened, I was like, how, how do you do that? How do you show honor? How do you, how do you show love after that? And she said, it was only by the grace of God. And it took time. And it took doing, doing those things because of God and, and setting those boundaries and all those things. But um, to me, it was a powerful testimony of her faith, of uh, doing the right thing when it's really hard, uh, and showing honor to God in how we do that. Um, and I know that's hard. I know there are situations that are going to be difficult and different, and uh, I think the ba- boundaries and, and right and wrong is very important in all those things. Uh, but I think it's also important to remember where our heart is and what I saw in her was a heart change that was, that was amazing. Um, and I, I aspire to be like her with people who have hurt me. Something to consider, something to remember. So the principle here, the principle from the commands in the Bible to honor our parents is we're to honor and respect authority. We're to honor and respect authority generally. That's, that's what the Bible teaches. And specifically to honor our fathers and mothers, to show them respect, uh, to show them honor. <clears throat> and how can we do this? An attitude, change our attitude in our interactions with the parents, and care for them. There's been many people who've been caring for their, their parents uh, during, during the COVID situation and taking them into their home, and I think that's a wonderful way to show honor. Sometimes honoring your parents is when they're, they're older, you're caring for them. And, and you're having to make hard decisions. And that, that's a beautiful way to show honor in both care and your attitude. Oh, and I know it's a great sacrifice. So the principle, honor and respect authority, and the application, let's, let's show, honor our parents both in our action and in our, our attitude. Next one. Honoring our mentors, acknowledging spiritual leaders, and the power of mentoring. Uh, just why it's so important. We're going to go to 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5, he, Paul is wrapping up the end of the book and giving some ending exhortation, some ending encouragement and instruction to the church, and uh, there's a lot of wonderful stuff in the end of, in chapter 5 of uh, 1 Thessalonians, and some of that relates to Honoring and acknowledging those who've had a powerful spiritual impact in our lives. So let's jump in there. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. Spiritual leaders, acknowledging our spiritual leaders, thanking them, recognizing them, uh, showing them honor and respect, it means more than just Pastor Rich. It means more than Pastor Rich, Brandon, Tad, and I. 
It means more than the elder board and the deaconess board. It means those who, those who are both official church leaders and people who, who've been mentors in the faith to you. Acknowledge them. Thank them. Uh, express it to them. Uh, because they have poured into our lives. So it's more than just the pastors. Uh, it's, it's all those who, are, who have spiritually mentored, mentored you. So honor, acknowledge those who are in authority over us. Thank them. That's probably the biggest thing uh, in acknowledging is just showing, showing thanks. Uh, thanking God for them in your lives. Thanking them specifically. Um, and when you look at the passage here, it's those who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. So it's people who, who are teaching, who are encouraging, that they're, they're helping you along the path of following after Jesus well. And that can, incur, that can include uh, things that are formal teaching situations, like a class. That can include people who are accountability partners, who are, who are bringing you along the path in an area of sin, uh, struggle, and, and moving towards victory in that of, of any type. And to hold them, it says in verse 13, hold them, 13, to hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. And I love this last little command here. Uh, live in peace with each other. So we're to, be, we're to listen to our spiritual mentors. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm at Bethel Community Church. I took the input of Dr. Spiegel in my life very seriously. Uh, I took the input of my dad and my mom and others who knew me, had invested in me spiritually, and I listened to them, listened to their correction, listened to their encouragement, listened to their advice, and I encourage all of us to do the same. God's put those people in our lives. They're dwelt with the Holy Spirit, and uh, I think we should listen to them uh, and their admonishment to follow Jesus. One illustration, uh, especially on that last sentence there, that live in peace with each other. I think that's a, the, the acknowledging and following after our, our spiritual leaders um, and those who are mature in the faith bring, bring unity, bring uh, living in peace together. And I, I just want to bring up uh, an example from here at Bethel. So during the whole... COVID situation and everything that's going on crazy and trying to figure out how to open up, when to open up, uh, what to do with masks. I was, I was frankly nervous coming into an elder meeting, like, I have no idea what's going to go down. Uh, but I came away from that meeting uh, even more deeply respecting the, the gentlemen on that board who love the congregation, who love Jesus, who have a deep desire for peace and unity and that's, that's how the meeting went. That's how the conversation went. And our, our focus was how can we keep the church united and help people follow after Jesus and, and, and move forward and navigate the rules from the government and uh, keeping people safe and keeping people healthy and all of that. And I, I deeply appreciate them. And it was just an example where as I was studying through this, I was like, this is, this is what our elder board did. And I... I am personally just so very thankful for that. And I think that needs to be in the case for all of us as spiritual leaders. Sometimes we, as leaders, have different ideas about how to do ministry. Often it's just very much the how. It's not even the most important things, and we'll butt heads about it. And I think instead we need to, we need to live in peace and unity and, and be be the mature united leaders so that they were worthy of a, the acknowledgement and the respect. Just an illustration of something that, that's really stood out to me recently. So 1 Thessalonians 5, honor our spiritual leaders. Let's acknowledge them. Let's thank them. Uh, there are many in my life who, this is a reminder to me, I, I'm going to thank some of them. Honor our spiritual leaders. And we can, we can apply that just thank you, saying thank you, um, saying I appreciate all that you've done, the care and concern you've had in my life, and, and that would be an incredible encouragement to them. So that's how we can apply that. All right, last one of our three things. 
uh, godly mentors, character traits of spiritual leaders. And I think this is, this is in some ways one of the most important aspects of, of this whole message and topic is the, the character traits of spiritual leaders. Because it's not just the pastoral staff. Spiritual maturity is what every believer should be moving towards. Every believer should be moving towards. We are to be disciple makers who make disciples, who are going to make disciples. And that's how the church grows. That's how it's grown throughout history. And that's when we're at our most healthy. And uh, we need not just quality teaching, but mature, spiritually mature brothers and sisters in the Lord who can, who can be spiritual fathers and mothers to us and, and help the church to grow in, in wisdom, in knowledge of the word, uh, and in faith. So let's get into uh, Titus chapter 2. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 8. Titus chapter 2, 1 through 8. You, however, must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine. And he's speaking to Titus there. Uh, teach the older men to be temperate, moderation, temperate, worthy of, self res- worthy of respect, self-controlled, and in sound faith, in love, and endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. I love the, the, the concept of Titus is, is told by Paul to teach those who are older, teach them who are, who are spiritually mature, so that they can teach the younger generation. And both for men and women, we see the same, the same character traits that come out here. So, how to, how to be a spiritual leader. First off, grow in your faith. All of us should be growing. Whether you're young, whether you're old, we should be growing in the knowledge, we should be growing in the love, we should be growing in the application of God's word in our lives. All, all, that, that's for all Christians to do. Second is, is look at your your sphere of influence, who's around you, who you can naturally impact. Uh, and those are people you should, you should see and, and try and intentionally pray for, mentor, reach out. Some of those people are going to be people in your family. And we pass out the, the Oikos prayer cards. That's a good reference of who those people might be. Of those in your household, those in your church where you're interacting a lot. Those in your workplace, those who are your neighbors, uh, and some of them may be saved, some of them may not be saved, and, and having an impact in those people's lives. That's the next part of being a spiritual leader. And then serve using the gifts God has given you. All the context of how you serve, what you do, is going to be different for all of us because the Holy Spirit has given to each of us different gifts. But here in Titus, it shows... These are character traits that are important for being spiritual mentors. So here's here's the one. Temperate, moderation, having moderation, whether it be with alcohol, like he says to the ladies, don't be addicted to too much wine, Uh, moderation, moderation in general in life, with food, uh, with entertainment, uh, moderation. Uh, Self-restraint or self-control, for both of them to have, have lives that are, are well-disciplined, ordered, and you're not just pulled aside by every impulse and desire of the flesh. Spiritual maturity. A sound faith, a faith that's, that's solid in who Jesus is, in the gospel, in God's word, uh, in love, in living that faith out as Jesus' command, in loving one another. And endurance, that it's not a a flash-in-the-pan, quick burst of faith and excitement about Jesus, but it's a a continuing, long endurance in the faith through suffering, through trials, through tribulation. These are things uh, that those who are spiritually mature should have. And 
it gives them something to mentor and to and when they teach um, just has incredible value and we all know that from those who've impacted our own lives and then they're also called to teach sound doctrine you see with the the ladies there <clears throat> but to teach what is good um, <clears throat> and and so that the word of god would not be maligned both our teaching our words and our actions matter because if the actions don't fit with the words people are not going to take it seriously spiritual maturity the mission of discipleship is for every single believer it's for you it's for me it's for pastor rich it's for children it's everyone in the church everyone who is a believer in jesus christ the mission of discipleship of growing spiritually ourselves and then making disciples who grow spiritually uh, and they make disciples that's that's the mission that we all have so what's our principle from from titus 2 leaders should be spiritually mature um, all of us should desire to disciple others to desire to be a leader in that capacity and all of us as we grow and mature in the faith need to need to have both the the character qualities as well as the head knowledge so grow in spiritual maturity when you think about spiritual maturity don't look oh, up to someone as as if they were jesus in some incredible example no uh take the steps day by day growing and have people around you who are spiritual mentors who can guide you in that whose example you can follow um, and not from a distance and that's that leads me to one one thing that i i think may be a healthy shift in christianity in the u.s so often we can focus on these kind of christian super celebrities who they may be fantastic teachers they may really know their stuff but they're they're at a distance we don't really know them uh, i went to dallas theological seminary but i don't really know chuck swindoll um, i talked to him like once or twice uh, he's taught it and did a bunch of chapels but i don't know him he's not a part of my life i learned from him but jeff potts or uh, michael spiegel or craig colston they 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 were a part of my life i knew them I got to watch them follow God and live it out and have uh, their struggles and their successes and they were real present people and they taught me God's word and they were showed me how to live it out and that's that's what I think we need I think we need to move away from this idea of looking looking up at these these almost icons of the faith and Christian celebrities and their teaching may be great and wonderful and useful and that's that's not a bad thing but instead shift our focus of how can I grow to a spiritual maturity so I can be a mentor to others and who are around me spiritually mature brothers and sisters in the faith that I can learn from and grow so I encourage you in your own walk look look around look around you for those who are uh, spiritually mature who can mentor you and in your own life grow be intentional about it um, use use what god has given you to serve and be a disciple maker be a disciple maker so our three principles first honor our parents honor our fathers and mothers uh, today is father's day uh, i think it's a great time show some specific honor and respect to your dad show them some love i think that's i think that's valuable and important but i think generally we need to show them honor show them care both in our actions and in our heart attitude show them show them respect and care honor your spiritual mentors that's our second one honor your spiritual mentors acknowledge those people who have poured into your lives i'm going to go and do that this week uh, that's one application for me i'm going to i'm going to try and give jeff potts a call and a few others a call and just thank them for the incredible impact they've had in my life i encourage you to do the same let's let's acknowledge those who have impacted us spiritually have been our mentors spirit in the faith and then our third principle 
our third takeaway, grow into spiritual maturity. Become a disciple maker. Become someone who is spiritually mature, who can lead and show what it means to walk in the Christian faith. And that doesn't mean you're perfect. No, that means when you sin, when you stumble, when you, when you have struggles, you respond in an appropriate way. You respond in repentance. You respond and continue to grow because that models that models what we should all do as Christians. Nobody's got this figured out. Nobody is sinless except Jesus. And so, so grow in your own faith, in your own knowledge, in your own maturity and obedience to God, and, and make disciples. Be someone who is, is intentional and spiritually mentored in your family, uh, to your friends, to your church family, uh, work. Uh, those in your surrounding um, sphere of influence, be a spiritual mentor. And be worthy of respect, not just of a title, not just of a title, but be worthy of respect. I have those character traits uh, and the humility to continue to grow. <clears throat> and so that's my encouragement to you all today. Happy Father's Day. Let's show honor to our dads. And let's Let's be on the path of growing, and let's be on the path of showing respect to others. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you're, uh, when I talk about God being a good father and our heavenly father and adopted children of him, if you don't understand what that means, you don't have a relationship with him, I want to encourage you today. Uh, he is a good God who loves us dearly. We can call him father. He calls us children. And... What we do is we acknowledge that we have sin. We acknowledge that we have a problem, something that separates us from God, and Jesus is the solution. He came down to earth to live a sinless life, perfect, to die on a cross as the substitute for our sin, to take away the guilt, the shame, and he rose from the dead, victory over sin, death, and Satan. And we can have new life. And we can be invited into that family, that spiritual family. And you and I can call each other brothers and sisters. Um, and we can call God our Father. Please join with me in prayer. Lord, we, we thank you. We praise you today. I pray that we would honor our dads. That we would honor you in how we, how we treat them. And I pray for all of us that we would grow into maturity, that we would grow into spiritual maturity so that we too can, can be spiritual parents to others, to lead them along in the faith, to be good, good examples, <clears throat> and to teach the word well. So we praise you, Lord, and we thank you. Amen.